You say rolling, you leave it in your edit as well. It sounds dramatic. Too upset. Right, so um, we're at Bilderberg. Uh, I've just bumped into Sarah, and this is you, Sarah, is it? Yeah, Sarah. You got her? Yeah. Okay. And um, she, she just came up to me and she said, um, "Hello, Bill. Um, uh, I love you. You're a hero, and uh, um, I'm one of them. You know." And I said to her, "One of what?" And she said, I'm, uh, I'm a victim of abuse. And I said to her, you've got nothing to be ashamed of, come out of it, same as yeah. I do. And I have already. Because, yeah, well that's it, that's good, yeah. Sarah, because if we, if we don't come out, no, who's no, going to no, talk about it? I don't know. And you've written two books. I've written two books. What yeah. are the books called? I've got a book called Dark Souls, which is uh, about psychopaths. Yeah. And I've got a book called The Phoenix Spirit, which is about moving on from abuse. And where can people buy these books? Um, you can buy them on Amazon, if people can't afford them. How they... much are they? Um, about ten pounds, but if they can't afford them, I'll give them away. So I've been known to give the books away, so right. people can actually. So ten pounds, nothing for a book like that from someone who's had first-hand experience. So get Sarah's Sarah's book, and it, if you haven't got the money, then she'll give you one. But yeah. if you have got the money, buy one. I've got a YouTube channel, um, No Ordinary Life Seven. Yeah. I've got loads of videos, loads of information. Well, I'll, t I'll tell you what, Sarah. Since I've been here, people are saying to me, "How do you incorporate child abuse?" In to Bilderberg. Well, the, re the way I'm incorporating abuse. child abuse is because I believe that world politics, banking, the army, uh, the, the police, they're all. Um, oh, <laughs> I've just seen someone. My cameraman's just turned up, it's a bit late. But what I'm on at the moment is paedophilia controlling world politics via blackmail. Yeah, if you've got, you got images of, like, Leon Britton, Leon Britton is an outrageous um, paedophile um, uh, trafficker, possibly murderer. Right, so I could get Nick for that. Chaps, can I? So come and get me. And then we've got Kenneth Clark. Kenneth Clark is an outrageous nonce, paedophile again. And um, so there, there's two good names. I love so, it. How you just say right, it. So we've got two politicians just there. Just two there. So, and I believe that Kenneth Clark was he Home Secretary, Leon Britton was Home Secretary. Leon Britton was in charge of the police, for God's sake, during Thatcher's time. And Jimmy Savile, who spent 13 consecutive Christmases with, um, with, with the Thatchers at Chequers, he was there to update her on all the latest paedophiles, the paedophile rings, over the year, and then she'd go, yes. And then she'd go and blackmail them. It's not right, is it? You know, I simple, just, really. I just want to say something. I remember when all the Jimmy Savile stuff came out, and I made a couple of comments like, "How can you say that is, uh, you know, innocent until proven uh, guilty?" Yeah. And there's an expression, and you'll know it. And you know, when you've come from that kind of background, you might not necessarily know, but you can smell it. Yeah, you can. You can. And, and you can sense. Yeah. And murder. And, I'm talking about murder. Here. I'm talking about torture because well, today's victims are tomorrow's witnesses. Yeah. That is what you have to understand. Today's victims are tomorrow's witnesses. So, so many kill. We're talking about children being killed on a massive scale here over the years. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. But you know, I think as an abuse victim, you'll know, you might not necessarily know, but you can smell it, you can sense it. On you, some of them, not all of not them. Not all of them, but a yeah. lot of them. Yeah, yeah. you can, and, you definitely And then you get validated afterwards. So, yeah. you know, I wouldn't accuse anybody of doing something unless well, I Well, you know when you're a child, if you're in the, um, I don't know what your abuse was, but mine was in the institutions, you know, children's homes and things like yeah, that. Yeah. So you would get to a stage where you knew when someone was schooling you, and I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I, you know, that's why most of the time I was either escaping from places or I was in solitary confinement because I was trying to stand up. I was, I was a bit like, even at the age of 12, I was, I was like um, a shop steward. You know what I mean? I used to speak up all my brothers and sisters that were in there. That couldn't, and that's why I took the beatings and um, the sexual abuse and I would be, um, in, you know, locked up. If it, if it was children's homes, they'd lock me up in cupboards. If it was young offenders institutions, I'd be bush, straight into solitary confinement. Which I didn't mind really, I used to do my press up, sing. I used to like puppy love at the time. And they call it puppy love. So I used to sit there and then the screw would come and I'd go banging on the door, shut your fucking noise in there, you're gonna get a beating. So I'd keep quiet. I'm not laughing because it's and then I'd, no, 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 you know, you know what, what I mean? mean. But what I'm trying to say is I still retained my dignity. And the reason I, most of the time I was in solitary confinement, or so I'd take the beating and I'd be in solitary confinement, because I refused to march. 
I don't remember. I, didn't, I, I just. So I, I remember I was in a place called Ashford, right? And it was a. It was a. Um, uh, you know, you go to court, they hold you on remand there, so you didn't really do time. And it was a wing in a, in a man's prison, but in our wing it was called detached wing, so we was up to, it was only 16, uh, 16 year olds, up to 16. But I was in there when I was 13, and there was 30 of them, uh, and we was all marching, uh, 300 of us were marching, and I was the only one who, who stopped marching. And the screw came up to me at 13, rammed his truncheon under my, under my chin, and started really abusing me. Why well, smell with you, you fucking little cunt? And I said, I'm not working. I'm not. I'm not marching. So two weeks, solitary confinement. 13 years of age. All I had in my cell was a piss pot, a plastic cup, a plastic plate, and a chair. That's why you're stronger. Yeah. And then and then, and then at seven o'clock or eight o'clock, the mattress coming. Love ya. Anyway, thank you. Sarah, check her book out and everything else. Yeah. What's your name? Patrick. Pie Match Films. Pie Match Films. What's your name? Patrick. All right, Patrick. Nice hey, that's a Paddy's name. You're Paddy. Yeah, like me. What's your name? Chris. Yeah, he's got well, You're he's not got Paddy at all, Chris. Ah, oh, you're still a Celt. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to keep fighting them. Is that still yeah. running? Yeah. We're still going to fucking yeah. keep fighting them. We'll fight them with this. We'll fight them with this. Whatever it takes. Your case fights? Yeah, we're trying to just spread the yeah, word. Give it to the MMA audience. Yeah. Get them on board. Get, well, why, why, why don't you um, get Cameron in the cage? Yeah. yeah. I'll go in the cage with Cameron. Yeah. I'll tell you what, if you ever bump into him, you ever film him, tell him I'll go in the cage with him and I'll put one hand behind me back and one leg up like that and I'll still smash him all over the place. He's a fucking horrible man and he's covering up so much. Anyway. Adios amigo. Ciao Bella. See you cage fighters. She's on you now, look. No, no, I'm just curious. I'll see you soon, Sarah. Yeah, 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 we can, yeah, we can. Where you been? Hello, mate.